When the B-52 Stratofortress made its first flight in 1952, no one could have imagined that this bomber would survive not only the Cold War, but also the turn of the century. Today, more than 70 years later, it not only remains in service, but is undergoing a new modernization that ensures its combat effectiveness for several decades. How did a common mid-20th century project become a symbol of 21st century strategic power? Like much of the United States' iconic fleet, the B-52 was born from the need to neutralize the Soviet threat. The choice of who would provide the new nuclear bomber for the Air Force was obvious. During World War II, Boeing had already become a legendary name with the B-17 Flying Fortress, which carried out decisive missions in Europe and the Pacific. While the company was still producing almost 4,000 units of the B-29 Superfortress, in November 1945, the Air Force Materiel Command presented requirements for a new strategic bomber to replace the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. It should have a crew of at least five people with defensive turrets, speed of 300 miles per hour at 34,000 feet, combat radius of 5,000 miles, and capacity to carry 10,000 pounds of armaments. A few months later, the requirements increased. Speed should reach 400 miles per hour range jumped to 12,000 miles, and nuclear weapons delivery became a priority. The biggest dilemma was choosing between turboprop or turbojet engines. The military command distrusted the high fuel consumption of jets at the time, forcing Boeing to design prototypes with turboprops, such as Model 46440. However, within the high command itself, there were disagreements. General Howard Craig believed jet engines were not yet reliable enough and insisted on an intermediate phase with turboprops. General Curtis LeMay, on the other hand, advocated for more powerful jet engines, arguing that range problems would be solved later with aerodynamic improvements. He was also the one who demanded that pilots sit side by side, rather than in tandem as in the B-47, to reduce fatigue on long flights. After much discussion, the final specifications were defined. Maximum speed of 500 miles per hour and range of 8,000 miles. At the end of the project, there was even a curious episode. A group of Boeing engineers bought materials from a hobby shop and assembled a silver-painted balsa model in a hotel room based on the basic layout of the B-47 Stratojet. The prototype had 35-degree swept wings, eight engines, mounted in four twin nacelles under the wings, and bicycle-type landing gear with small auxiliary wheels at the wingtips. The result pleased the military, and the B-52 entered production. The first Stratofortress flew in April 1952, just three years after the Soviet Union tested its first atomic bomb. In June 1955, it entered service with the 93rd Heavy Bombardment Wing at Castle Air Force Base, California. Already in January 1957, three B-52s carried out Operation Power Flight, completing the first non-stop around-the-world flight with jets covering more than 39,000 kilometers in just 45 hours and 19 minutes. In the following years, the bomber broke several records, including the longest flight without refueling, 12,532 miles from Okinawa, Japan to Spain. Today, the only model still in service is the B-52H, derived from the B-52G, but with Pratt & Whitney TF-33 turbofan engines more economical and powerful than the old J-57 turbojets. With them, the maximum speed rose to 650 miles per hour, and the range, without refueling, reached 8,800 miles. It also gained a 20-millimeter M61 Vulcan rotary cannon in the tail, advanced radar for low-altitude flight, and new fire control systems. Even with the arrival of more modern bombers, such as the supersonic B-1 Lancer and the stealthy B-2 Spirit, the old Stratofortress continues to be the backbone of United States strategic aviation. Why? Because it is extremely reliable and cheap to maintain. Between 2000 and 2001, the B-1's readiness rate was 53%, the B-2's only 30%, while the B-52 maintained an impressive 80%. Over the decades, it has carried almost every type of armament, conventional bombs, nuclear bombs, cruise missiles, laser-guided bombs, and even anti-ship missiles. Externally, the pylons under the wings can carry up to 12 AGM-158 JASM missiles with a range of 370 kilometers. 
Internally, the bomb bay has a rotary launcher that accommodates up to eight AGM-86 ALCM cruise missiles, including with nuclear warheads. At the height of the Cold War, a single B-52 could carry up to 20 nuclear missiles. Even after the fleet was denuclearized in 2010, the American Congress is discussing reactivating part of this capability, equipping the bomber with the new AGM-181 LRSO nuclear missiles. But to remain relevant until 2050, it is undergoing a series of modernizations. In 2020, the U.S. Air Force began the program to replace all eight engines with modern models. Rolls-Royce won the competition with the F-130 engine, derived from the BR-7225, much more economical, reliable, and quiet. Nevertheless, it will continue with eight engines, because reducing to four would require redesigning the entire wing, which would be expensive and time-consuming. Additionally, the B-52 will receive the new AESA AN APG-79 radar, the same used in modern fighters. It will have greater range, more precision against ground and maritime targets, and better resistance against enemy countermeasures. The aircraft's nose will be visually clean. Another important upgrade is the new Hercules pylons, capable of carrying much heavier weapons, including hypersonic missiles that are under development. In 2024, the AGM-183 ARRW, a hypersonic missile, was successfully tested from a B-52, demonstrating that even a 1950s design can be adapted for the most advanced weapons of the 21st century. The original fuselage remains incredibly resistant. The wings, made of aluminum and magnesium alloys with steel spars, have been reinforced over the years, and the design, despite being old, is ideal for long high-altitude flights launching cruise missiles from outside the range of enemy defenses. With all these upgrades, it will gain a new designation. It will cease to be B-52H and will be called B-52J. This version will bring new engines, AESA radar, digital cockpit, reinforced pylons, and fully updated electronic systems. This will allow the Stratofortress to continue flying comfortably until 2050 or beyond, completing 100 years of continuous operation. Why keep it if the United States already has the B-2 Spirit and the new B-21 Raider? Because the B-2 costs almost $2 billion per unit and is extremely expensive to operate. The B-21 will be cheaper, but still limited in number. The B-52, on the other hand, is cheap, reliable, and can carry tons of weapons on missions where stealth is not essential. Thus, it remains unbeatable in conflicts against countries with limited air defenses. The B-52 Stratofortress is not just an old airplane, it is a living symbol of the evolution of military aviation, proving that a good design can last entire generations. Even when fighters became stealthy and drones dominated the skies, the old buff continued there, ready to fulfill its mission. And now, with new engines, modern systems, and capability for the weapons of the future, it will continue flying for the next 30 years. The B-52 Stratofortress, the bomber that defied time.